just breathe. When you think about it, breathing is remarkable. It's something we do every minute of every day. We hardly think about it. It's just there, automatic, happening all the time. And we live another day, another minute. Scavenger's Reign deals much with the beauty and tragedy of everyday life, the experiences that people have in their day to day. But in the process, they created a beautiful world, one of staggering, intense power and majesty. It's profound and deep, but at the same time, savage and threatening. Like so much of life at our world, when you look at it closely, even though we're removed from much of it in our Western context, I think what's remarkable to me about this is the intricate dance between world building and character development. Throughout the story, it's told from the perspective of three separate survivors from a spaceship which crashes over the top of a planet in alien world, entirely alien. Nothing on the planet seems familiar. Humans can breathe the air, sure, but there are dangers and hazards around every corner that are strictly environmental, dispassionate, simply trying to live. That's the background of this story, a completely alien world, even down to its color palette. Everything seems unusual and hard to put your finger on. There is this constant contrast between the beauty and the danger, and even some characters represent this in the way that they live. Sam and Ursula, for example, the pairing, are constantly at odds with one another, with one pausing as a scientist to examine the world around her, and the other guy, the captain of the ship, is focused singularly on survival. While one is surviving, the other is living in this place, and to an extent, embracing it. This actually follows the arc of the show, where they move from feeling threatened and out of place in their new world, even though they left places that were probably feeling fairly alienating to them, and find a place of new life. Ironically, the characters that are featured in the show are not the colonists, but the crew of the spaceship, the delivery men. They're just along for the ride, they're taxiing people. They pack the cargo, fly the ship, return home, pick up more colonists. They're not the ones really going on the adventure, so to speak. They're the ones who just man the spacecraft and take the colonists there. For the majority of the show, the colonists actually find themselves stuck in cryostasis as the survivors try to find their way back to the ship. Through the process of each of the members of the crew trying to find their way back to the ship, new dangers are approached and seen from several different angles. But one thing is always remaining space and beauty, breath. This idea of ma or space is brought about by Hiao Miyazaki, the creator of Studio Ghibli, and it deals with this notion that you need to create room for an audience's experience. And the minimalist art style used for the world in Scavenger's Reign, as well as the broad spacious soundtrack, leave much room for the imagination and the exploration of this world. There's sorrow to it, and there's a danger, and there's a beauty to the soundtrack. It's pared down and minimized. Throughout the process of this, I think there is this deep desire to commune with nature and a deep desire to enjoy the beauty of your surroundings even when they're alien and disconcerting. It would be understandable for all of the characters to be preoccupied with the danger. It's clear that a ton of effort was put into creating the world, an active ecosystem that the characters find themselves involved in with predators, prey, and all manner of unusual creatures. It seems like the artists were looking hard to make everything seem unusual without always having clear allegories to things we might find on Earth. While you watch it, you begin to think to yourself, how could anyone learn to live in such a hostile environment? The story of the show begins a few months into survival and the characters have already grown used to many things and learned to use different tools in their environment to survive. It's wild when you consider the fact that we share this planet with bears, lions and tigers, and all kinds of other creatures and poisonous arrowhead frogs and quicksand and piranhas. You come to realize that this world may not be quite so different from our own. There are dangers in every corner and they are new and unique and frightening. They're also dispassionate. They're just trying to live and people are sometimes tools for them and sometimes vehicles for them and sometimes just prey waiting to be eaten or at least sampled. I think this is the thing that makes the show so amazing, though. We see each of the different characters coping with their new environment, 
with fear and misunderstandings, with anxiety and stress. We see them also embrace the wonder of it, and through the course of the adventure, you find that many of the characters draw nearer to it, like Ozzy and Levi, her robot. These characters have an amazing narrative, because the robot Levi begins to have a form of fungal infection that seems to connect into the lifeblood of the world. Many of the characters on the planet seem to have sort of a psychic connection to one another in a strange way that's unfathomable and difficult to understand for humans. But it seems like there's a connectedness to the world, and the robot becomes engaged in this and begins to understand it in a way that Ozzy, the human, can't. And as that robot gradually develops a form of sapience, Ozzy comes to recognize the beauty in what she's seeing, not just the fear of repercussions. Life is finding a way. So this is the whole narrative of the show, and what makes the world building in it so incredible. All of it ties together in a symphony. It's beautiful, breathtaking, down to the color palette, and soundtrack. It's completely uplifting, powerful, profound, but at the same time, terrifying. It would probably fit neatly into the genre of science fiction horror. All the different characters learn to cope with this through the course of the story, and though I'm given to understand this show was 10 years in the making, which doesn't surprise me given how much effort they put into their world building, it was not wasted effort because it is in perfect concert with the story they were trying to tell. About the conflict of our nature versus our better self, of learning to love and appreciate the beauty around you despite the danger. That's what makes the world building in this so powerful and something so much more than a Wikipedia page or lore page. What's fascinating is the world of the humans is also expansive. It also looks like there are corporations and independent colonies that have cut themselves off from the rest of humanity, and apparently there are space Catholics. But it's all left in the background and left to explain itself, shown by its role in the story, rather than simply given as exposition. It's given space. It's given ma. Breath. So in case you hadn't guessed it, I can give this show my hearty recommendation and think it's remarkable to see. I think it's a definite case study in how great world building can be done in a way that exists in concert with the story and the themes in the show. It celebrates the beauty and the fear and the danger of what lurks around us in every corner. Go and watch it. It's worth a view. Available on Netflix currently. Hey, I hope you enjoyed watching that as much as I enjoyed making it. Here at the Worldcraft Club, this was a little bit different than our norm. But if you'd like us to do more audio essays like this and breakdowns to make more sort of useful world building content that provides that sort of analysis, go ahead and like us and follow us. Let us know that you like the video, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks.